your view on how to think about these updates with Pulse Chain. This was something super interesting that you mentioned beforehand. I think this is kind of a, a new thing uh, you haven't talked much about quite just yet. Do you want to frame this, kind of explain to the people how you've come up with thinking about these Pulse Chain updates? Sure. So I've been thinking about, there's a few different ways, a few different indicators I want to go through. And some I've talked about before, at least one I haven't. And I think it's a pretty important one too. Maybe I've alluded to it, but I haven't really like did it in a forum discussion like this before. So first of all, I want to say none of these require any special skills or exclusive access. You don't need to be in a paid group. You don't need to like all this public information. There's no secrets. And I, you know, the, it reminds me like you have some of these extreme money maximalist people who are, you know, in the community, they're not or whatever. And then they don't want to share information. I don't know. Just the transparency thing is a little annoying to me sometimes. I'm like, you know, it'll be on the stream. Oh, don't talk about that. Don't talk about that. Don't give the people that. I'm like, man, like I, I want to help the community here. I, I don't, you don't need to have, I don't need to have all these secrets. So these are things I want to share with you all. I would say the three big things and anyone can look at this. Anyone can do this again. Don't need special skills. Maybe you need a little bit of tech skills for some of them, but first of all, base, I'll start with the basics, the hex price. So perhaps people in the last few days have been voting with their money. Yeah, there's one theory for you. Uh, you know, we were at 12, 13 cents on May at launch. And then now, uh, yesterday, at least, I think we're up a little bit now, but we, we went around uh, seven or eight cents. So to me, that my first thought was, well, people don't think pull chain is that close because it makes no sense to sell right before the fork. Like you, like if anyone in this community knows anything, they think that, uh, the, all the coins are going to have a value once the pull chain fork happens, it is hex. So you're going to want that PX copy. So that's one thing that, so looking at the hex price, if you, for example, if you see it go lower, you know, to me that says, unless there's just going to be some crazy, you know, uh, four hour run up before launch and then just literally get the greenest candle you've ever seen in your life. I don't think that's going to happen. I think it'll be gradual again. Uh, not financial advice, just my personal opinion. Um, so that's something you want to look for. So hex price. Second thing is LP. So, uh, that, that kind of ties into LP positions as well. It would make sense for the LP to be pulled because as far as I know, your Uniswap LP position, which is kind of like a special NFT, isn't getting, getting copied over Pulse Chain. Now, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think that's the case. A lot of people have been talking for a while that LP is likely to be pulled. Hex price volatility is going to be crazy at that time because people are going to want their PX copies. They're going to want the, those liquid or, or staked, of course. It's, we know get those get copied over. So recently, I wrote a tool um, I wrote some code as, as a dev might do, um, and you can run locally and I can share the link and stuff as well. I have it on my GitHub, but if you know how to use Python, know how to use command line, uh, it basically, you can use it to get the number of hex, uh, in the liquidity pool and hedron, it supports hex and hedron. You can get, uh, it, it just goes through a few different pools, mostly the biggest pools. And it'll tell you how much USD liquidity is there. And, and then you can also track it. You can say, okay, over some time period, uh, if it goes, uh, you know, a after four hours, eight hours, whatever it is, if you, if you notice a 10% change, 20% change, some big swing, that could be a sign of liquidity changing. Maybe it's getting pulled. It just, you know, okay, I need to go investigate. I need, I detect something may be happening. So that's, that's another uh, way, an indicator that something around launch may be happening. You may see liquidity move around. And then, the third one is the one I haven't really talked about much, which is the transparency certificate transparency reports. So big words, nobody knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, it basically, it reminded me around uh, around the testnet launch, we saw some people talking about DNS, some different domains coming online, and I that reminded me like, oh wow, that's that would be an easy thing to write or easy thing to check would be. Like if we could, if we could look at the different certificates being published, because all this public information, you know, you can look at the transparency reports. You can look at certificates for different domains being published when people register them or, or create certificates, all that. You can see the domains that exist. Uh, you can use, you know, different information to put together. There's different services offer this. There's different code that you can use to track this stuff. And, you know, if, for example, if you see one day you see mainnet.pulsechain.com get registered or a certificate created, Hey, indicator, right? So there's ways to do this. You can Google and, and find out different services that can help you or, or code. If, you, if you're a coder, you can write the stuff yourself to, to look at it. There's different frameworks. But that is another sign that 
uh, you could you could use to say, okay, if something interesting looks registered and it's not testnet, or maybe it's something to, in testnet you just want more information about, that, you know, RH or otherwise hasn't talked about. That's one way you can get more information. Again, all public information. It's all all fair, all fair game. So those are the big three, I would say. And the fourth one uh, that's I don't think is being very utilized right now that I tweeted about, I think a few weeks ago. If you are not subscribed to Pulse Chain GitLab updates, you're missing out. So I just about every day I see in my in my inbox I see updates for code or merge requests or documentation updates or something going on. So the devs are working on stuff, and I'll just drop this link. I'll put it in the private chat because I, I imagine I'm not a mod in this channel yet, but I'll drop it here so you can post it. And that is a uh, I went through exactly how to subscribe to. Uh, GitLab updates. So when they make changes in the repos that are public, now they may make private changes and you can't see those or no no much information, but the public updates you can see and you can track those. And if you know what's going on or you can, you can try to read into them if you want, but that, that's another way to get information to try to put some of the pieces together. So those are four different ways. Everything else is just guessing, speculation. <laughs> Even what RH says, you know, you go back, he's been saying launch is closed for two years now. <laughs> So if he says this is your last shot, again, I, I don't take everything he says with uh, definite certainty. But those are four things I think that you can use as indicators to try to put some of the pieces together. And you know, if if you're doing them and other people aren't, maybe you can give, your, give yourself a leg up. All public information. That is such a great way of of thinking about this. I'm so glad you put this intangible terms because everyone's grasping for straws trying to read the tea leaves and read into what you know each and every tweet means and the frequency of tweets and all this stuff but th these are very very tangible updates spe specifically the GitLab. now as i'm kind of you know hearing you say all these things i think you know one of the things i think we're all asking ourselves is okay we're kind of periodically all getting these kind of series of updates to the GitLab or these tweets these all these things but how do we know which one of these updates is the one that kind of really signals we're getting close here? Now, I have a tweet from Hexologist I want to bring up here in a second. But one thing I want to bring up before we get there is your point about the liquidity uh, providers. That's a very, very interesting thing to kind of dwell on because liquidity providers are presumably, you know, we can argue the point here, smart money whales people who have a large financial interest in getting this right and we're not just saying you know their behavior is 100 guaranteed to be the most optimal way of playing this but they have some they have financial incentive to attempt to try and in, in time things somewhat right and you're right that perhaps you know when they do start to withdraw from the lps that might be the sign that hey we're getting close and what i'm thinking is as we get all these updates in the GitLab and all, all those kinds of things Whatever one of these updates triggers the uh, the liquidity pull, that's probably the update that kind of matters in terms of us getting closer. Do, do you understand what I'm trying to get at here? And would you agree with that? Well, that's why I wrote some of the code to track it too, because it's, it's. I think I think when we see people pulling mass amounts of liquidity, and and even there's uh there's the I think hex hex well the whale bot it's even said before about liquidity being pulled. And had I known better before, I may have thought, oh, wow, something's, you know, maybe something's about to happen. Although I knew testnet was coming and stuff like that. So it probably wouldn't be a mainnet suggestion, but you can see it. You can get alerts from that too. But yeah, I mean, that's, if you want to get your copy, as far as I know, if you are holding liquidity, you're not going to get, uh, you're not going to get a copy of that you can use on PulseX, for example, because there's no, not going to be any Uniswap uh, on Pulse Chain, as far as I know. So yeah, that would be you would they would want to pull liquidity, have it liquid or staked, whatever, get their copy, and then put it back afterwards and do whatever they want, bridge it over. So I think liquidity is a is a big sign. But how do you track that? Again, it's like I wrote some code to do it. You can use uh, hex the the well bot that, that says all the extreme transactions that are happening, the buying and selling, and it's talked about liquidity before. Or you just listen to TA people or or people on stream that uh, want to talk about these these things going on. But uh, to me, yeah, that's that is. That is one indicator that something big is about to happen, especially since we're in testnet B3. Richard says it's the final one. This is not going to testnet B4. It doesn't look like. So if mainnet's next and you see liquidity being pulled, 
that sounds looks like a sign to me. If it's if it's like really drying up and and then you got other people looking at it and you, know, you see all the tweets, oh look at all the stuff like from trusted people, right? That would right. be a sign for me. 